you're being played. You may be on the right. You may be a conservative. You may be a Trump supporter. But you're being played. You may be on the left. You may be a democratic socialist. You may think that socialism is coming. You're almost on the threshold of achieving your goals. But you're being played too. We're being told, we're being led to think that this is all about socialism. If you're on the right, you're told to fear the coming of socialism. If you're on the left, you're told to cheer the coming of socialism. But as I said, we're all being played. This isn't about socialism. This is about neo-feudalism. And what we have just experienced was a neo-feudalist coup d'etat. Let me explain. I guess a good place to begin would be to define feudalism. Now, feudalism varies from place to place and time to time, but essentially feudalism is relatively simple. You have three classes, what the French used to call the estates. At the top, you have the first estate, the aristocrats. They control everything. They own mostly everything. Beneath them was the second estate, the clergy, which basically runs the show. And then comes everyone else, the third estate. You know, what is the third estate? Uh, Abba Isaias asked in January 1789 on the eve of the French Revolution. We're all the third estate for the most part. And in feudalism, we were all denied rights and denied the right to control the destiny of the people, of ourselves. That's what feudalism is all about. Feudalism evolved in Europe. Comparable systems evolved in the Ottoman Empire, Japan, elsewhere. The aristocrats ran things, not day-to-day -day run, but they controlled things. They owned the land. They owned the property. They didn't really run the show. That was left to the clergy. And we can see elements of that even in our lives today. What do you call the people who do clerical work? Why do you think they're called clerical workers? Because in the feudal days, the clerics, the priests, did that work and they wore their white collars in a Christian world especially in the days before the Reformation. Catholic priests wear that distinctive white collar. That's why it's called clerical work. That's why it's called to this day white collar work, because it was done by the clergy. Now, why did the clergy basically fulfill the role of the bureaucracy to make this system work? It's because they were the ones who were educated. They were the ones who knew how to read and write. In the early days of feudalism, the aristocrats, many of them, uh, were illiterate. They couldn't keep records. They didn't know what was going on. They couldn't read old Roman laws because they couldn't read anything. So basically, they had to rely on the clergy to do the work. The clergy became the bureaucracy. And the clergy had certain rights. The clergy owned had its own lands, and it had its own property and its own wealth. And of course, when the aristocrats needed cash, Think Henry VIII, what do you do? You go around and you seize the property and the wealth of the clergy because they're basically the only other people who have property and wealth other than the aristocrats themselves. And underneath that was everybody else. You know, what the, the Bolsheviks called the, you know, the proletariat, the workers and the peasants. And they had their own sets of rights, but very limited rights. And of course, they didn't have, in places like serfdom, you couldn't even move around entirely. You know, Russian serfs weren't the equivalent of chattel slaves, but they were attached to the land. They went with the estates. You sold your estate, the people went with it. That was feudalism. Now, to be sure, in some ways, socialism, communism, was an extension of feudalism. Instead of the arist aristocrats at the top, you had the nomenclatura, you had the party. This is what 
how it's run in China today. You have the party controls things. They're the new aristocracy. Underneath them, you have the bureaucrats who run things. What in the old Soviet Union, they were called the apparatchiks. And they do the work. They keep the records. They do the enforcement. They do all the other things. You have that class in China as well today. Then underneath that was everybody else. And that's pretty much the same for feudal society and for uh, socialist society. There are connections between the two. The differences involve who gets to play the role of the aristocrats. Now, in a socialist state or a socialist wannabe state, the aristocracy's role is played by the party, the communist, the socialist. In feudalism, the aristocracy is a hereditary group. They let in people from the bottom every now and then, but for the most part, it's turned over, you know, from father in those days to son, normally the firstborn. Second, third, fourthborn sons would become warriors or go into the clergy. That's the way it worked. And that's where we're headed today. The arist aristocratic class, our elites today, aren't hereditary aristocrats, although they would love to become hereditary aristocrats. There are some examples. The Roosevelts, the Kennedys, the Bushes. And then you have the newcomer aristocrats who want to preserve things for their own children. Clintons, the Obamas. These are the people who are our new aristocracy. And the means by which they want to secure this is what they've called the Great Reset. This isn't a conspiracy theory. You know, until it was taken down a couple of weeks ago, you could find this online from a World Economic Forum. You can find videos of Justin Trudeau talking about the Great Reset and other politicians as well. What is the Great Reset? It's a world where, you know, there's no property and all your wants are taken care of. Basically, you're a serf. You have aristocrats at the top. If you don't, if you won't control property after the Great Reset, who's going to own everything? The state? Maybe nominally, but who's going to control the state? The aristocrats. Our new aristocracy, our elites. These are the people who want to control how you operate, what you do, how you live your life, and the environment within which they operate so that they don't lose control. Think about how they've handled this pandemic, which these people, these great reset people have said was a great opportunity. Who benefits? Who has gained in, during the pandemic? Who has lost? Have the big corporations gained or lost? They've all gained. Has the bureaucracy gained control or lost control? They've gained control. The state apparatchiks have gained control. The governors, some of the governors around the country, Whitmer, Cuomo, Murphy, Wolf, others, gained control, extended their political control extended their enforcement capabilities. Who suffered? If the big corporations profited, small businesses suffered. What about people who work? Did the people in what we, the French would call before the revolution, the third estate, did they suffer? Yeah, they lost their jobs. They lost their incomes. Sometimes they lost their health care, lost their homes, lost their businesses lost their hopes. Look at that second class, what used to be the clergy, but in the modern world is the bureaucratic class, the technocratic class. Did they lose? When you have shutdowns in New York or Pennsylvania or Virginia or Michigan or wherever, who doesn't lose their job? Do you ever see a governor not take a salary? 
You ever see the state bureaucrats in Michigan or Pennsylvania, New Jersey, not get paid? They always get paid. So big business gains, the aristocrats, the clergy bureaucratic class, they don't lose anything and they gain power and authority. And the people who lose are all in what the French would have called the third estate. We're the losers. There's a pattern here. And I don't think it's just accidental. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the pandemic is a hoax. It's not. It's real. But we handle it in ways that benefit the first estate, don't hurt the second estate, and all the burden falls on the third estate. You know, as Saez wrote before the French Revolution, you know, what is the third estate? We are the third estate. Who's getting screwed? We're getting screwed. The third estate is getting screwed. The second estate is gaining more power. The first estate is gaining more wealth. And when this is over, they're going to continue to benefit because the competition has been weeded out, cut back, weakened, in some cases destroyed. And that's why I say what we're up against here isn't the coming of socialism. It's the coming of feudalism, neo-feudalism. Both the people on the right and the left have been played by magicians. It's prestidigitation, sleight of hand. Look here, look here, look over here, look over here. Meanwhile, you know, we're, we're giving you a shaft. You know, you're, you're focusing on one another. The Trumpists are focused on the socialists. The socialists are focused on the Trumpists. To some extent, they're literally fighting in the street, stabbing each other, in some cases killing each other. And in the meantime, the elites just keep breaking in the dough. The second class, the, the second estate, no longer the clergy, now it's the bureaucracy, the deep state, they keep breaking in authority. I mean, there's a clear pattern here. And if you open your eyes, you can see it. If you think in terms of a feudal structure, first, second, and third estate, the first and second are benefiting, the third estate are the losers. And when this is all over, the first and second estates are going to be more powerful, and the third estate is going to be less powerful. We've all been played. We're still being played. We have the control of the media, control of the discourse. Isn't it amazing that only a few weeks ago, if you tried to post, and I did, a New York Post article about the Biden story, get blocked. Today, there's plenty of articles being posted about the Biden story. Why is that? Why is it suddenly okay to talk about it now? He's going to be president of the United States. Aren't they worried? No. They're not worried. They're getting set up to get rid of him. If he's inaugurated in January, it won't be long before the stories will continue. Pressure will be brought on him to resign, to make way for the candidate the elites wanted from the beginning. Go back to 2019. Kamala Harris was described as the woman Obama. They wanted her. They wanted her so much. She was the best candidate. The problem is she couldn't get 3% of the vote. She didn't make it to Iowa. But she's going to be president by the end of 2021, probably, if not then in 2022. We've all been played. Socialism isn't the threat. Feudalism is the threat. A feudal society in which the aristocracy controls things and doesn't have to worry about competition. You have to remember, when market capitalism came, who lost? Who lost when markets began to develop, when markets were opened up, free markets developed? Who were the losers? The aristocrats. Look at what happened to the aristocrats as modern Europe expanded. They steadily lost control. Some places, Russia ended up dead. 
Louis the Sixteenth, Marie Antoinette, guillotined. The rest of them, if they weren't executed, they fled France for their lives in most cases. They were the people who lost because of market forces. Aristocrats by nature, while they may nominally be capitalists, don't want competition. They don't want true capitalism. Back in the 1970s, when I was in graduate school, something was said in a class about the wealthy group at the top that you know always controlled everything. And our professor brought in a list from Century Magazine. I think it was from 1900 to 1901. It was the 100 richest people, families, in the United States. And he asked us to go out and find a list like that for then, which was, I guess it was probably 1978, somewhere around there, give or take a year. And I found a list in Forbes. And of those 100 rich families from 1900, there were only three who were still in the list of rich people in this country. I think the Rockefellers, there was, there were three of them. It doesn't really matter which one. All the others were gone. Many of the people on that list of 100 richest people in the United States in 1900, 1901, I had never heard of. We have this idea that, you know, the, the rich are there and that they, they stay on top and they're the same rich group. They're not. They fall out. New people come up. There's all this movement, but they don't want competition. That's what people talk about, crony capitalism. You know, you, you get there where you are via capitalism, and then what you try to do is to hold on to the position you have. You don't want competition. Facebook doesn't want competition. Twitter doesn't want competition. YouTube doesn't. Google, they don't want competition. They would love to use the government to limit competition. That's feudalism. You know, the aristocrats had the land. There were there were some economic things going on that they often had a controlling hand in. They didn't want market competition. Market competition killed them, weakened them. They don't want to get weakened. They don't want the people interfering through representative government or democratic government, whatever you want to call it, with their decision making. They know best. There are betters. And just like in feudal, look at feudalism. Look how it worked. Where do we think this idea of a fair wage comes from? Feudalism. A fair price. Feudalism. The idea that the clergy working for the aristocrats would determine, you know, what a unit of labor should cost, not the market. How much a bushel of grain should cost, not the market. They would control the prices. That's the way they liked it. Keep people where they were. So you didn't have a lot of mobility. If you don't have a lot of mobility in society, the people at the top don't lose their position. That's what feudalism is all about. And that's what this Great Reset is all about. Neo-feudalism. Lessening your rights. They'll pay you off. They're going to give you health care. They'll even, they'll give you, well, you know, more income, said income. But of course, they're going to crush you with taxes. They're going to destroy the value of your money with inflation. It's all prestidigitation. Look, see, watch these socialists. Worry about the socialists. Why we take your rights from you? Worry about Trump. He's going to put you in a concentration camp. He's going to take your rights about you as we take them away all in the guise of fighting a pandemic. This is what's happening, not just in this country, but around the world. And the, the thing is, they think they're on the verge of gaining power. But they're not. My prediction is, assuming things keep going the way they are, Joe Biden becomes president in January. We've just hastened the onset of not just an American civil war. I talked about this before in a video. There's something happening around the Atlantic Basin, just as it happened at the end of the 18th and early 19th centuries. You know, it wasn't just the United States had a revolution in 1776. Revolutions were breaking out in the entire Atlantic Basin. 
The same thing's going on today. That's why these neo-aristocrats want to impose a stronger neo-feudalist society. But it's not going to work. All they've done is hasten us all toward the abyss. Got something out of this video? Made you think? Give it a thumbs up. Hated it? Give it a thumbs down. Fine by me. Subscribe to the channel if you can. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.